Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Museum Munchkins. I'm Mr. Nick, and today we are talking all about rats. And so let's stand, start by singing a rat song, and we're going to stand up on our feet while we sing and dance around. Now, this is a counting song called Five Little Rats. And so in this song, we're going to start off with five rats. Can you hold up a number five on your hand like this? One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to count backwards from five all the way down to zero, because we're going to end up with no more rats in our song. So let's practice our counting and sing our little rat song. Are you ready? All right, here we go. Let me see a big number five. Five little rats in search of food. Their tummies rumble for something good. One little rat smells something sweet and runs right off to find a treat. So now we have four. Four little rats in search of food. One, their tummies rumble for something good. One little rat smells something sweet and runs right off to find a treat. Three little rats in search of food. Their tummies rumble for something good. One little rat smells something sweet and runs right off to find a treat. How many rats do we have left now? Do you remember? Two, two little rats in search of food. Their tummies rumble for something good. One little rat smells something sweet and runs right off to find a treat. Now there's one little rat in search of food. Their tummies rumble for something good. One little rat smells something sweet and runs right off to find a treat. And now there's no more rats. They all ran off to find that food. I'm going to set my guitar down. Thanks so much for counting and singing along with me. I'm going to set my guitar down so we can talk all about rats. Now, have you ever seen a rat before? Maybe you know someone who has a rat for a pet? Or you've been to the zoo and maybe seen one there? Or at a pet store? So rats are a type of rodent that we find all over the world. Although they originally were only really found over here in Asia and down in Australia. But from humans traveling all around the world over the last th several thousand years, we've brought them with us to almost every single place on Earth except Antarctica. And now there are actually more than 60 different types of rats. The rats most people are familiar with that uh, are either the domestic rat that, they, that we keep as pets or uh, things like the Norway rat or the brown rat or the house rat and other rats that live around humans and around our cities and towns. Uh, but since there's 60 different types of rats, that means they actually come in all sorts of sizes. Now, typically, rats are usually about five to seven inches long, which isn't very big, but then their tail can actually add a few more inches onto that, almost doubling their length sometimes. And they come in all sorts of different colors. So we see black rats and brown rats and white rats and gray rats and uh, a whole other bunch of different colors in between. Now they have that long tail on their body and that helps them to balance when they're walking around or when they're climbing on something or when they're running. Um, and it also actually helps to cool their bodies down. So rats don't sweat like we do. Um, so when it gets really hot for us humans, oof, we sweat 
and that sweat helps to cool our bodies down. Well, rats don't do that. So instead, they actually will push their blood out into their tail, and that will cool their bodies down a little bit. That All that extra heat will go out their tail instead of getting trapped in the fuzzy, furry, warm part of their body. And they also have whiskers. Can we make some whiskers with our fingers like that? Absolutely. So rats have whiskers, and their whiskers are actually really, that are on their faces, are really important for them, and they're very sensitive. They use their whiskers when they're feeling around their environment. Maybe they are in somewhere where it's very dark and it's hard for them to see, but it also, they, yeah, they use those to feel around their environment, and those whiskers are so sensitive that they're actually about as sensitive or even more sensitive sometimes than our fingertips which are, we know are really sensitive. We can touch our fingers like this and feel how sensitive they are, how good our fingers are at feeling things. Well, rats' whiskers are good at feeling things too, just like our fingertips. Now, rats, like I said, are found all over the world, and we can find them in all sorts of different habitats, but they love to live around humans. Um, and gather up all the food and things that we don't use or that we throw away. Um, they're usually nocturnal, so we don't usually run into them, even though they live around us, um, unless we, you live very, very close to where the rats live. Like in places like cities, where the rats and humans live much closer together, then you might spot one occasionally, um, but in the, and usually we don't see them because they live oh, far away from, the, from humans. They like our food, but they don't like to live too close to us usually. Now, rats are omnivores, which means that they will eat just about anything that they can find. Um, so they will of, often be seen, like I said, digging through humans' garbage, looking for food that we leave behind or we, that we don't use. But they'll also eat things that we don't uh, throw away that they can just find in their environment too. So there are rats that don't just live around people too. So rats like to uh, use their long sharp teeth at the front of their bodies to eat uh, grains and insects or chew through the shells of snails or fish or mussels. They like to eat lots of different food that they can find out in nature in their environments. Um, <clears throat> and they use those teeth too for chewing on wood or things to get to um, some of the food that they, that they like to eat. And their teeth actually never stop growing over the course of their entire lives. So they have to chew on things constantly. In fact, if a rat didn't chew on things all the time to help keep their teeth shorter, a rat's teeth would grow to be about five inches long in one year. Those are some really long teeth. Now, rats are known for having very big families. How many people uh, are in your family or live in the same place that you do? So there might be a few people who live in your house, or there might be a lot, but rats live in packs of, uh, with uh, packs of other rats in the thousands. Can you imagine living in a family that you had a thousand brothers and sisters? I don't know if I would be able to remember everybody's names. Now, lots of people think, like I said, that rats are pretty cute and they like to keep them then as pets. Do you know anyone who has a pet rat? Yeah, so rats are actually really smart and friendly animals, the domestic rats that we keep as pets, and they can actually even be taught to do some tricks or solve mazes or puzzles, so they're actually really smart animals too. Now, and like, like I said, the rats that we keep as pets, though, are very different than the rats that we find outside in our environments or around where we live. So... Um, the rats that we keep as pets are much more gentle and they're much less likely to bite somebody um, because they're feeling scared. So rats that live outside can sometimes make us sick. And so if we should ever see, we should never see, if we see a rat outside where we live, we should never bring them inside just because we know someone who has a rat as a pet. It's best, just like other wild animals, to leave them outside and leave them alone, just like other wild animals. But like I said, there are special rats that people do keep as pets. 
And there's actually also a number of jobs that us humans have trained rats to do, which is really interesting, I think. So many rats are trained to work in the entertainment industry, in TV or movies. Um, we, there are also actually uh, police rats in the Netherlands that have been trained by police to sniff out gunpowder. And some rats have actually even been trained to help electricians wire buildings by holding a string and pulling a string through the wall. Like, so they've been trained to do that to help them run cables and uh, like internet cables and, and um, uh, electricity cables. And some rats are actually even used as therapy animals. Um, since their size, since they're so much smaller than something like a dog or a cat, um, and up, up, there are some people who might feel really afraid of a bigger animal like a dog, and so a smaller animal like a rat is actually a better therapy animal for them. So who knew so much about rats or that they had so many different jobs? I thought that was really interesting. And actually today, we've got a story about a rat who has given himself a job, but I don't think that it's the best job actually for this rat. Let's go take a look at that story we've got today. All right, today's story is The Highway Rat by Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler. The Highway Rat, rat was a baddie. The Highway Rat was a beast. He took what he wanted and ate what he took. His life was one long feast. His teeth were sharp and yellow. His manners were rough and rude. And the highway rat went riding, 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 riding along the highway and stealing the traveler's food. <clears throat> A rabbit came hopping along the road, then stopped with her paws in the air. For blocking her way was the highway rat, who cried out, Who goes there? Give me your pastries and puddings. Give me your chocolate and cake. For I am the rat of the highway, the highway, the highway. Yes, I am the rat of the highway, and whatever I want, I take. I have no cakes, the rabbit replied. I just have a bunch of clover. The highway rat gave a scornful look, but he ordered, Hand it over. This clover is bound to be tasteless. This clover is dull as can be, but I am the rat of the highway, and this clover belongs to me. A squirrel came bounding along the road, then stopped with a shake and a shiver, for reining his horse was the highway rat, who thundered, Stand and deliver! Give me your buns and your biscuits! Give me your chocolate eclairs! For I am the rat of the highway, the highway, the highway! Yes, I am the rat of the highway, and the rat thief never shares. I have no buns, the squirrel replied. I just have a sack of nuts. The robber snatched the snack and snarled, I'll have no ifs or buts. These nuts are probably rotten. These nuts are hard as can be. But I am the rat of the highway, and these nuts belong to me. Some ants came crawling along the road, then stopped with a somersault. For bearing his teeth was the highway rat, who bellowed a deafening halt. Give me your sweets and your lollies. Give me your toffees and chews. For I am the rat of the highway, the highway, the highway. Yes, I am the rat of the highway, and nobody dares to refuse. We have no sweets, the ants replied. We, have, we just have this nice green leaf. Oh, no, you don't. Not anymore, declared the highway thief. This leaf is nasty and bitter. This leaf is thin as can be. But I am the rat of the highway, and this leaf belongs to me. With never a please or a thank you, the rat carried on in this way. Flies from a spider, milk from a cat. He once stole his own horse's hay. 
The creatures who traveled the highway grew thinner and thinner and thinner, while the highway rat grew horribly fat from eating up everyone's dinner. A duck came waddling down the road, then stopped with a, how do you do? I see you have nothing, the rat complained. In that case, I'll have to eat you. I doubt if you're terribly juicy. Most likely you're tough as can be. But I am the rat of the highway, the highway, the highway. Yes, I am the rat of the highway, and I fancy a duck for tea. Hang on, quacked the duck, for I have a sister with goodies you might prefer. I know that she'd love to meet you, and I'm certain that you'd like her. For her in her cave, her deep, dark cave, right at the top of the hill, are biscuits and buns aplenty, and there you may eat your fill. Lead on, cried the rat, and they took to the road, which seemed it would never end. Onward they rode and upward, bend after bend after bend. At last they came to a lonely cave, and the duck began to quack. She quacked, good evening, sister, 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 and sister, sister, sister. A voice from the cave came back. Do you have any cakes and chocolates? The highway robber cried. And chocolates, chocolates, chocolates. The voice from the cave replied. I'm coming to take them, the rat thief yelled. His greedy eyes grew round. And take them, take them, take them. Came back the welcome sound. The highway rat leapt off his horse. Into the cave he strode. The duck took hold of the horse's reins and galloped down the road. Faster and ever faster, following all the bends, the plucky young duck went riding, 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 galloping down the highway back to her hungry friends. Then they shared out, all the, out, out the food from the saddlebags and feasted all night long. Bright were the flames of the bonfire, Loud was the music and song, wild was the moonlight dancing, merry the cheer and chat. For now they could live in freedom, safe from the highway rat. And as for the rat in the echoey cave, he shouted and wandered till he found his way out of the darkness on the other side of the hill. <coughs> A thinner and grayer and meeker rat he robs on the road no more, for he landed a job in a cake shop, a cake shop, a cake shop. And they say he still works in the cake shop, sweeping the cake shop floor. The end. All right, so today our craft, we are going to make some little paper rats. This is a really simple activity we can do. So you can actually make a ton of rats, a whole big rat family too, because this activity is pretty easy. So for this activity, we are going to need a piece of brown construction paper or whatever color you want your rat to be. I want mine to be brown. A piece of pink construction paper. And then we're going to need some scissors and something to draw with. I've got this black marker, whoops a glue stick, uh, I've got a pencil, and I've got these cool eyeball stickers. Instead of drawing some eyeballs, I thought this time I might make use some eyeball stickers instead on my rats. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brown paper and fold it in half, just like this. There we go. And now, I'm going to draw a half of a heart. Do you know what sort of shape a heart makes? Sort of round on the top and pointed on the bottom? A Valentine's Day heart, sort of like that. Not like a real, what a real heart really looks like, but sort of a Valentine's Day heart. So sort of make it round on the top and down to a point at the bottom. There we go. Just like 
that. And so now when I cut this one half out, that's going to be my rat's body. There we go. So see, and now if I unfold it, see how it looks like a heart? But we're actually going to keep it kind of folded in half like that, and that's going to be our rat's body. So I've got my body here, and now I can take my eyeball stickers. I think I'm going to use these ones right at the top. And I'm going to stick one eye on this side and one eye on this side. There we go. Perfect. And I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to color in his nose at the very tip. And I'm going to draw some whiskers too with my marker. There we go. So we've got some whiskers on both sides too. Now I'm going to take my pink paper and I need to cut out one little square, just like that. And then I'm gonna cut out one long skinny piece of paper. And that's gonna be my rat's tail. Actually, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit because I cut it a little too fast. So the edge looks a little rough. Let's cut it like that. There we go. So I've got my rat tail now. And I'm gonna, I've got this little square I cut out too, which I'm gonna fold in half and I'm gonna cut out some rat ears out of this other square of paper that I cut out. There we go. So when I fold the paper in half and I cut something out, I actually get two of the same one. So now I can use my glue stick to stick my little rat ears on the sides of my rat's body right by his eyes. There we go. One on this side. And one on the other.